unless you really do live in a tent, vacuum cleaners are essential to keeping your floors clean. They're typically very reliable, with the difference in price points usually related to increased performance and extra features. But if they're so reliable, then what brought you here if you don't have a problem to resolve? Well, most problems could have been prevented in the first place with some regular, basic maintenance. But before I run you through our troubleshooting tips and tricks, let's have a quick look at how a basic vacuum cleaner works. This will help give you a better understanding of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't. A standard domestic vacuum uses a flow-through motor design where the dirt is sucked up by the floor tool through the wand and hose and into some form of collection system, which traps the larger particles. Finer dirt is then captured by a pre-motor filter before passing through the motor and then out via the post-motor filter. This airflow also prevents the motor from overheating. It's very important that filters are in place, maintained and harmful building materials are not vacuumed as these will damage the motor as they pass through it. Now you know how vacuum cleaners work, Let's look at each of the most common causes for failure. Poor or even no suction are the two top issues consumers have with any type of vacuum. We can use the same checkpoints to resolve them. Let's start with the collection system. Regardless of whether you have a bagged or bagless system, as they fill up, airflow is reduced, resulting in poor suction. So regularly check and either replace the bag or empty the container. A handy tip to remember is that for most bagged models, reusable bags are available. Just make sure you check and empty them regularly. The next thing to check are the filters. Nearly all cleaners will have two, sometimes three filters and can be in not so obvious places. So you might need to refer to the owner's manual to find where yours are. Filters straight after the collection system do most of the work and will need frequent checking and cleaning. Some can only be tapped clean into a bin, while others can be washed after the loose dirt is tapped away. And foam filters like this one can be cleaned under running water and never use cleaning sprays because these can damage filters. So refer to the manual for the correct method of cleaning your vacuum's filters. Oh, and one last tip on filters, which is never use your vacuum without them. Besides the eventual damage this causes to the motor, all you'll be doing is sucking up the dirt from one area and blowing it around to another. Over time, filters can no longer be effectively cleaned, which will reduce suction, resulting in more time vacuuming. When replacing filters, make sure you do so with the correct one, as fitting the wrong type or incorrectly fitting the right filters will allow dirt to pass through the motor and damage it. Information on replacement filters can be found in the owner's manual. Okay. So we've checked our collection system and all the filters, but you still have poor or no suction. This means the issue lies somewhere in the floor tool, wand or hose. Believe it or not, it's not uncommon to suck something like a sock or a toy from under a bed without you knowing it, which can get stuck, reducing suction. Then over time, hair and lint build up around the object, eventually blocking all airflow. The floor tool and wand are pretty easy to check for blockages by simply looking through them. But for hoses, you'll need some help to either hold it out straight to look through it, or drop something like a large marble down one end and see if it pops out the other. A sneaky cause of poor suction is at the hose handle, which features an air control vent. These are used to reduce suction when cleaning rugs and mats, but can also be accidentally knocked open without you realising it. Turbo heads are very efficient at vacuuming pet and human hair, as well as stringy strands out of aging carpets and rugs. But this also results in them quickly getting clogged up, reducing suction power and slowing the turbo brush down. By carefully using a hobby blade or a pair of sharp scissors, cut the intertwined strands along the brush bar, pulling them out as you go. Some models allow the brush bar to be removed for easier access and cleaning. Clean turbo heads regularly to maximise efficiency and protect them from damage. With powered brush heads, it's important to clean them regularly and well before they're fully clogged up. If the brush bar is prevented from spinning, it'll eventually burn the motor out. So we've dealt with low and no suction, but what about when the vacuum is not running at all? If you have a cordless model, the obvious thing to check is that the battery is charged. But for corded models, it could be due to an overheated motor usually related to airflow. Collection systems that are full, dirty filters and blockages all reduce airflow, and airflow is important to keep the motor cool. 
When vacuum cleaners are used for very long periods, combined with poor airflow, the power to the motor is cut by an inbuilt safety thermostat. This over temperature protection system is common with most models of corded vacuums and can take up to an hour before the motor is cool enough to reset itself. While you're waiting, you can check all those problem areas that reduce the airflow that cause the motor to overheat. The last point I want to touch on is what you shouldn't be vacuuming up with any standard domestic vacuum cleaner, and that's building materials and damp objects or liquids. Vacuums are sometimes bought by renovators to clean up work areas. Plaster and masonry dust in particular are extremely fine and will burn out motors with very little use and will void the warranty. The best cleaners for these jobs are wet and dry workshop vacuums that utilise a bypass motor system. For more tips and tricks, check out our website or YouTube channel.